Hi, dear. This is sort of a continuation of yesterday's talk, which was the Shalom talk. And uh, I was thinking about some things. I thought, how can I uh, continue it now? Because I was talking about what, what to do when there's people in your life or situations in your life that are uh, disturbing your peace and, and upsetting and things like that. So I, I wondered if you'd ever thought about what Jesus' final temptation was. And we, we know he was tempted in the garden. You know, he, to, he, he wanted to find a way, another way, but finally it wasn't his will, it was God's will be done. But I was thinking about how on the cross, what if, what if he hadn't asked for forgiveness for those who hurt him? Remember he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can you imagine if he didn't do that? He, he himself would no longer have been sinless. He had to stay sinless all the way through to the end, even on the cross. And had he himself not forgiven them, he, he would have been in sin. And at that point, his death on the cross would have been the right thing and instead of the wrong thing. You know, it was, I mean, it's the right thing for us, you know, for him to, to go in our place. But he would have deserved to have been there himself had he not chosen to forgive those who crucified him, who was undeserving. Because if he had said, look at what they did, look at what's going on, you know, Heavenly Father, avenge me, whatever, you know, that sort of stuff. He would have been joining Satan in accusing them. Accusation in and of itself is a sin. And Satan stands before God, accusing us, accusing our brothers and sisters in Christ day and night. And Jesus would have been joining in with that voice of accusing. I can only imagine what he heard in his head because he no longer had any kind of connection with God. He had been totally cut off from God at that point because he had taken on the guilt and shame and sin of the whole world. He was so far from God and he probably had never even felt that because he'd never had sin. He'd never been separated from his father before. And now he was. And how strong he was to continue to do the right thing in spite of how it would have felt, in spite of how it seemed. It seemed like God had abandoned him. And in essence, he had. God had turned his back on him because of the sin, the guilt of the sin. But Jesus still did the right thing. I think that's pretty amazing. I would not thought about it that way before until tonight, thinking about this. So that's one of the problems that come up when there's stuff going on around us because it's so easy for us to, to end up sitting ourselves as well by joining that person in sin if we go into accusation, if we respond with anger and resentment, if we get defensive, if we get hurt, because then it's pride. You know, I mean, there's just all these issues then that we have so we don't want their sin to cause us to sin. So if we find a way to quickly forgive before we can have a lot of garbage, that's good. But once we've responded with all our own garbage, <laughs> we need to repent of that and forgive the other person. It's interesting. It, 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 there's the, the scripture that talks about, you know, you clear that room out. And they, you sweep it clean, you know, you get rid of the garbage, you get rid of the sin, you get rid of the enemy, and he leaves. And then he comes back a little while later, says, oh, here's, it's all emptied out. Let me bring in some buddies to come with me and, and really mess this person up now. And it's kind of like that, where 
somebody might do one thing against you and you end up piling up all this resentment and unforgiveness and anger and hurt and frustration and blah, blah. You know, you end up piling up seven sins for their one sin because of how you reacted to it. And uh, it really is powerful to take the time to stop and repent of all that stuff and give it to God and tell it to go because the cleansing's so wonderful to feel like a new person after that. But that's what I was thinking. I thought that's the, that's the best solution I can give you. It always is repentance. I I I wish we heard more about it. I wish we were taught more about it because it's so powerful. And uh, it truly is uh, the, the there's got to be more to it. I, I mean, they tell us to do it in scripture all the time, Old Testament and New Testament. Repent, repent, repent. Turn back. Stop doing what you're doing. Um, but I would, I would love to see if there's some, I don't know if it's in scripture. I don't, I don't recall any place in scripture where it talks about the power of it, but I can only envision in the heavenlies, the power of it because Jesus, you know, Jesus saying that on the cross, forgive them for they know not what they do. I just, cause you know, it just, it's got to just break the chains of hell. It's just got to break that, the power to break that, to break sin. It's amazing. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I don't have the words to express it. I just think it's amazing that it can break us free from the power of the enemy. And, and. There is no in between. People, I've I've been um, nicely told <laughs> that I see things in black and white, and I really do. I I do have a hard time finding a a middle ground, and uh, and I think because a lot of it is is God sees a lot in black and white. This is right. This is wrong. You're either with me or against me. You're for me or you're not. Choose this day who you will serve, whom you will serve. And, uh, you know, you can only have one master. You can only love one master. But God or mammon, God or money. And it's like, yeah. So I I tend to see things that way. And because of that, I, I tend to be hard on myself and hard on others because I <laughs> see it like this but um what I need to do is well and then what helps me to cut what I need to do is to cut slack for others and and just work 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 on myself that's all any of us are called to do is to work on ourselves and um that's that that phrase I've mentioned it to you before assume that everybody is doing the best that they can because aren't you doing the best you can? Aren't you? And wouldn't you like people to assume that you're doing the best you can? So I, I think nobody goes out of the way to, to purposely be less than who they are. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to be a slob. <laughs> you know? It's the unusual person who would choose to do that. But but even so, in some ways, when you, if they're really struggling, then they must have more going on than what we can see. If someone really has such a low bar for themselves, then they're oppressed. They're oppressed of the enemy and they need our prayers. So I don't know if any of that was helpful, but I just wanted to share those thoughts that it, there's that um, scripture. I know I've talked about this one before, how, how love covers a multitude of sin. And, and that love is where we, we try to find a way to explain why someone may have behaved that way in a way that's not condemning, in a way that's not sinning. So if uh, somebody gives you the cold shoulder, let's say they give you the cold shoulder, instead of taking it personally and being offended, well, you know, who do they think they are? Why didn't they say hi to me? Or whatever, or, or in fear, oh, they don't like me anymore. They didn't say anything to me. I mean, we could all have 
some sort of negative reaction if somebody's giving us the cold shoulder. But if you just assume they must have had something on their mind, they must have had somewhere they had to go. Maybe they're not feeling good today, whatever. You know, you, you make allowance for them instead of assuming the worst and putting them in a place of sin, assume the best. That's another way of saying it. Love covers a multitude of sin. You assume the best about people, okay? Until proven otherwise, just assume the best. And that's going to make you feel better too, because now you're not in a place of accusation. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So we're called to do the right thing, no matter what someone else does or says. Their sin does not give us allowance to sin. We still need to do the right thing. And uh, <laughs> well, I can tell you a cute story about that. When our boys were young, we had three boys. They just loved to rough and tumble. And, and then, you know, somebody's feeling that something would happen and somebody would get hurt. And what usually happened is somebody did the first swing. Somebody did the first punch. But everybody knew they weren't supposed to fight. So the one who got punched didn't punch back. I don't know why they felt like they could do the first punch, but there was never a second punch. And the one who got punched would always come upset and crying that they'd gotten punched. And oh, every day, every day there was something going on. And just like, oh my goodness. Are you guys, you know, why, why, why didn't you just get along? <laughs> so after this went on for a very long time, one day I sat them all down. I said, okay, we're changing all the rules. The rule is if you get punched, you're to punch back as hard as you can. And they were all like shocked. And you see, it, I could say that because they're all the same size. All three boys were really close in size. I mean, you couldn't have said that to somebody who was big and somebody who was little. That wouldn't have, But at the moment, in, in my frustration, I just said, Listen, all the rules about hitting are off. If you get hit, you're allowed to hit back. And they just, they couldn't believe it. They were horrified. They thought, well, how can you do that? How can you do that? I said, well, you have to defend yourself. If you got hurt and, and somebody hit you on purpose, then you're to hit back. And I tell you, things changed around there very quickly. We didn't have any more fights. Because <laughs> they didn't go into fisticuffs. They didn't go into all out pummeling each other. And it just thinks that once that even the field... It made things better, but then no one, the first, the guy, the guy who used to throw the first punch quit doing it because he knew he was going to get hit back. And I thought that was interesting that he no longer did that, whoever it was. I don't know if it was even always the same person. So anyhow, that, that was, you always want to do the right thing. So <laughs> that, that helped the first person do the right thing and stop hitting. I don't know if that's really relative to this. <laughs> So we don't want to join them in their sin, and it's easy to do that through accusation. So that's, those are just what my little notes were. So I hope those thoughts were helpful to realize how that can happen and how you can get pulled in. And I, I hope you, um, and I'm not saying this is easy. It's not. I'll, I'll have some times where something's upsetting to me, and it'll, it'll upset me for several days till I can get to that place of figuring out my own, my own mess with it so that I can repent and, and then forgive them and, uh, and take care of my own garbage. I, I, I have a tendency to let things affect me first and then have to deal with it later. But you know, at least you deal with it at some point and, uh, and get it straightened out again is when you let it fester for weeks, months, years that you really get in trouble. I don't want it to fester for even a couple of days. So I want to get better at that. But I, you know, I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes it's hard when it's somebody you really care about and that happens. Um, you wish it didn't. You wish it didn't. But out of love, out of love, we do the right thing. Because he loved us first, right? And he forgave us first. So we can do that. All right. I pray for you. I pray. Um, okay. I'm going to pray for you, Heavenly Father. I pray for the folks who are hearing this right now that... You would help them to be more sensitive to your Holy Spirit, sensitive to your promptings. And I pray that you would um, enlighten their hearts and fill them with your unconditional love, that they would find it easy to forgive and easy to love and let your love cover a multitude of sin. 
And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you have a good night.